Hey Floss Tube, I'm Kathleen and this is Situation Normal episode 22. And it's also March 22nd, so I like that. We've got 2222. Welcome, this is my channel about cross stitch. I am going to be talking about March Stitchy Madness. I am going to be talking about Strawberry Pickin' 21 style. I have a little bit of haul and lots to talk about as always. So welcome and happy spring because as my grandma Maddie would say, spring has sprung. And if you didn't catch that, that is my Scottish accent, which is really bad. I'm not good at it. My grandma, oh, she's from Scotland. And she would say things and I just didn't know what she was saying. I take things so literally, including sounds. And she used to call my younger sister and I a couple of little, she'd be like, what are the gettles up to? And I thought she was calling us like kettles with a G, but it was gettles, which was girls. So you can tell I'm very bad at accents, but spring's here. It's so beautiful outside. I mean, it's still kind of cool, but it, the sun is out. We have the boys in the backyard, they're playing, they're tracking mud all through the house, both front and back door covered in mud, which I welcome. And the fresh air, having the windows open, hearing the birds singing, my cat is jumping into every window we have in the house, which is it leaves scratch marks on the wall because she thinks it's a tree or something the way she jumps up it but it's just our wall just the paint chipping away but she's excited about spring too i even started working on fixing up our craft room so right now my husband and i share an office so he has his desk i have my desk and then it's like it's huge bookshelf with all his books on it and some of mine mine are tucked in the bottom but he has a big collection of books so we decided to either move the books downstairs or my husband's been doing ebooks more lately, so he might be getting rid of the books. Anyways, long story boring, I bought this huge, or I shouldn't say I bought it. I got it for free because someone was getting rid of it and they, I just rented a truck. It cost me what it cost to rent a truck to pick it up and it's beautiful. And I'm gonna show at the end of the video, I'm gonna make a little video of like a mini craft room tour because I'm not done. Like I said, my husband and I share the office, so it's hard for me to get in there and work because that's where he works, except for on Mondays. And then, but that's when I film is on Mondays. So anyways, again, long story boring. If you want to sneak at the craft room or what little work I've done on my craft room, stick around at the end of the video because I'm going to attach another one. Okay, so let's get into it. Um, I have some comments. So last week was International Women's Day and you guys left so many awesome comments and we talked about, there's something in my eye. I'm so sorry guys. I just, so I don't wear makeup. I wear makeup for the videos because I want to be fancy for you guys, but <laughs> and then I got a hair or something stuck in it. Okay, so we talked about International Women's Day. We talked about period poverty and you guys were amazing in your comments. Some of you are gonna get involved. I felt like you gave me too much credit for my small role in just making sure teachers don't pay for the menstrual products themselves. So I ended up joining our local chapter of the Period Purse, which is an initiative to end period poverty locally. And then, so my mom left a comment on the video and she said several years ago, her women's group at church, they were sewing menstrual products and then they were being mailed to parts of the world where they don't have access to menstrual products. But she couldn't remember what the organization was called and Teresa McCray commented and she said that her daughter was part of a group that did it and it's called Days for Girls. And I'm gonna attach a link to it because I checked it out and it's a really awesome organization. They, um, you can, I don't know right now because of COVID it's a little different so I don't think you can mail uh, you can I don't think you can sew menstrual products and send them in right now just because of like I said COVID they're not taking on new groups but in the future you probably will be able to and if you wanted to donate monetarily you can also do that and um, they named it days for girls I had to write this down because I when I when things come out of my mouth it's not always accurate so it came from the idea of days for girls, how many days some menstruators miss of either school or work, like how much money is that, how much time is that. So again, this is more of a focus on other parts of the world where they don't have access to it. So one thing I didn't realize about pe period poverty that you guys helped me understand by making me get more involved because <laughs> like I said, I felt like you guys made me feel like I was doing something great and I'm like, I'm not doing something great, I need to do something great. So I learned that, um, 
when you are dealing with menstrual products that are being sent to other parts of the world, oftentimes the girls don't have underwear to even attach the menstrual product. So brand new underwear is something that's really important with this initiative. And what they do is they include underwear as well. So you can buy packs or like I, they call it, I don't remember what they call it, but it's like a whole bunch of things that are in this package that they send to a girl and you can go on their website and choose which country you want it sent to and it has so much really valuable stuff that comes with like a bar of soap so they can wash it and like the liners it's really 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 cool so again i'm going to send the link i've talked a lot about this but it, it's really important and because you guys were talking about it i'm just giving you the information and also here to end pe period poverty locally brand new underwear is important too which i didn't know so if you see underwear on sale stock up contact your shelters go online search for period poverty and type in your city or your state or your province or wherever you are and see if you can get involved that way because i don't know there's so much we can do to help but you don't have to help but i'm just saying if you want to those are ways so that's enough period talk period <laughs> okay so Comments from last week, Angela Springett commented, oh, sorry, we're not quite done with period. I said period, but I'm taking it away. So she talked about how when she was younger, menstrual products were concealed in paper bags and how now her ex-husband will just pick up menstrual products for their daughter like it's nothing. And that made me think of my mom, a story my mom told me. So when she was little, her mom would send her to the store to pick up things. That was very common. Like she was like six, I wanna say maybe even five, maybe seven, we'll just in that age. And the one day her mom, this is my grandma, gave my mom a note and said, can you go pick this up for me at the store? Just give the lady the note. And my mom was like, why is she giving me a note? I know how to read. So she took out the note and she read it and she's like, I'm just gonna tell the lady. So she went to the corner store, which was also like a trucker stop. So there's all the truckers in their chairs. And this is the fifties so or like the late 50s and so my mom goes up to the old biddy they called her and she was like what can i help you with and my mom's like one cotex please and she said the lady's face just dropped she went white all the guys in their stools are like staring and like oh, oh. and so the lady like quickly like took some stuff from behind the counter and put it in a paper bag gave it to my mom and like shoot her out and my mom came home and gave it to my grandma and my grandma was like, you gave her the note. My mom's like, no, I can read. And my grandma was just mortified. And my mom said she thought Kotex was um, floor polish. It sounded like a like Comet or whatever, right? So we've come a long way from my mom's generation of it was concealed in a paper bag to the generation we are right now where men are going and buying menstrual products. So we are ending the stigma slowly but surely. Okay period <laughs> i think i hope there's nothing else okay yes so another comment so last week i showed you this awesome case that i thrifted and i because i wanted these scissors but i didn't know what everything else in here was so i was very confused like there's this mallet and this and a couple people said that they thought it would maybe bonsai scissors because if you look there's like some dragons and some different it's a dragons on the inside as well on the scissors so i was like i could see that and but then um someone else commented no economic value said that they're for eating shellfish which makes more sense because of I, because of this like hammer in here and like so i imagine you would put the shellfish on here take the mallet smack it i don't know anything about shellfish but and then these are like scooping it out tools but i think i'm gonna just clean off the scissors and use them for for stitching okay so that was one mystery solved you know I love a good solved mystery um, several of you gave me printing tips because I complained about not being able to print out my one chart in a large size and you guys seem to be like printer masters because I have never had luck printers and I do not get along I don't know if they can smell my fear I don't know I have a long history of printer issues so I tried everything you guys said, I couldn't get it, but I did get it printed my own way. So for those of you that have troubles, you should be able to figure it out by either enlarging or having it printed on several sheets. 
thank you for everyone that left a comment. And then my last comment is from Ms. Stitcher, and she says for back stitching, I was talking about how do you mark off back stitching? Like how do you mark off that you've stitched that part? She said that she takes a fine tip marker or a Sharpie and she just goes over in like a contrasting color. She just goes over the line. So that's probably what I'm going to do for uh, my backstitch Santa and for little women. So those are the comments, I think. Yep, they are. Okay, save the stitches. I have a really cool save the stitches. It's not in person, but it is from a Facebook friend of mine named Rachel. She shared this on her Facebook and here's the picture of it or maybe it's beside me, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. And this is a sampler that her great grandma did in 1888 when she was eight years old. So the middle section of the al alphabet is a little bit faded, but you can see that the red floss really held out throughout these years. It's like 133 years. Um, does anyone else have heirlooms like this? This is so cool to me to have this piece passed down generationally. And also the Eaton's bag. Some of you Canadians may recognize the Eaton's bag. That was a department store that we had here in Canada that no longer exists, but I believe it began in the mid to late 1800s. So even the bag is really cool. So I asked Rachel if I could share that and she said yes. We talked about how to preserve it. So she's going to be putting it in a shadow box but she wanted to kind of iron it out and I just told her to be careful because if it gets even a little bit wet like the threads the red could the dye could pull or you might damage it so she, I think she's just gonna leave it as is and frame it but I told her she could cut off because I I have started to gather information about this stuff and I I told her if she can snip off a little bit of the red thread she could see if it would die but she was like you know what I'm not gonna risk it so that is save the stitches for this week thank you rachel for sharing that and let me know if you have an older sampler or a generational piece that you've either thrifted or been passed down generationally okay it's time for whips so i've been doing march madness March Stitchy Madness, which is hosted by Steel City Stitchers. Here's my bracket. It works the same way for March Madness. Their brackets work. Except I chose, I chose eight pieces that I wanted to work on. So every day for eight days, I worked on one of these pieces. And then I put them against each other on Instagram and had you vote. So when we left off last week, I still hadn't stitched my eighth day. That was my eighth day. So I'm going to show you my Santa back stitch. If you remember, this is Cross Stitch and Country Crafts, November, December, 87 issue. And I didn't have this issue, but I had this piece that came in a stash that I bought and it wasn't finished. It just needed some of the back stitch. So Kim and Jill sent me a copy so that I would be able to finish the back stitch on this Santa, which was really awesome. So I worked, again, I only had a day on this, so I did some of this back stitching in here, and then I kind of worked my way up here in this blue section. And the chart is really difficult to read because it is from the 80s and they did, their charts I find were more difficult to read. I'm gonna see if I can kind of show you a little piece of it. So like, this is what the chart looks like. So it's like the red is what I'm backstitching, but it's not just the red. There are other colors in there as well that are backstitched. So it's tricky to like landmark where I am in the stitching. I can find it on the chart, but I can't always find it on the stitching. So I just, he just really needs his face done. I think an outline of the beard. And then there's just a little bit more here. So it was very close to done. Like I said in previous video, I think she stopped stitching because this part got wet and it bled a little bit. But I don't think that's worth throwing out. I think we can salvage this one and this is a true save the stitches, right? Okay, so that one went against Home for Christmas and it lost, but we'll get there. Okay, so those were my eight that I showed last week. If you didn't watch, check it out so you can see the top, or the eight seeds that we started with. So then, Riley Harbor was against Goonies and Riley Harbor won because I finished Goonies. So I will show you Riley Harbor. It's by Kathy Barrick. I'm stitching it on 18 count Fiddler's cloth, one, uh, two strands over one. 
and this is what I've got done so far. If you'll remember, I'm stitching this along with my friend Anna, and she saw she saw this. I posted this on Instagram, my progress, and she's like, "You lowered that house too much." She's like, "Don't keep stitching," and I was like, "Oh, because there is another house, but I went down because I'm trying to go down. There's like a big whale here, and I want to get to that whale." And also, okay, so there's blue waves, and I think I'm gonna use my my floss from Almond M and M's. And I'm gonna use this, it's really variegated. There's really nice variegation in there. So I think I'm gonna use that for the water. That's kind of what I was thinking when I ordered it. So, cause everything else is the DMC. I haven't, I didn't use any of the overdides. So, yep. So that's Riley Harbor. And Riley Harbor was the first piece. I spent two days. So once, the, if you, if the piece won out of the, the first eight, so whichever one won out of here, and moved on to the final four I spent two days on it instead of the one so I spent two days and that's what I was able to do I'm liking doing the houses even though I complained about them and whined about them I actually really like doing them so okay so then Riley Harbor was against Little Women this is Michael Jolly's Little Women and this is what I got done been working really in the same area. This is 25 count cream Lugana and I'm stitching two over two and I've been working on the railroad. Just kidding. Okay, I've been working on this part here. Who is it that's doing it? Is it? It is not Amy, not Joe, not Beth. I can't even remember her name. Meg. Meg is stitching, and so I've been working on her embroidery. That's kind of meta, eh? That I'm stitching someone's stitching. I like it. So yeah, so I've been I've done a I've filled this part in, and pretty much all of it is done. I just have a little bit more up here to do, and then her embroidery section is done, minus the back stitch. So I haven't done any back stitching on this yet. But I'm loving how it's coming along. This is a fan favorite for sure. So Little Women went against Riley Harbor and that was a tight race because there are a lot of Riley Harbor fans out there, but Little Women did win. So Little Women has moved on to the final two. Yay. I feel like I need to like have a round of applause like for each of them as they go. So then next was My Mother's House by Kathy Barrick, another Kathy Barrick. I love Kathy Barrick. I've probably said that a hundred times in my videos that I love Kathy Barrick. So my mother's house. And I am stitching this also on 25 count cream Lugana, but I'm stitching it three strands of the called for DMC over two. So I've been working on this little flower, this new guy. And it's tricky because it's, on angles, it's not straight lines. Straight lines are quick, right? These are not as quick. So my little flower is blooming and that was the progress I made. So my mother's house was in the final four and it was up against, let's see, it was up against home for Christmas back stitching. Okay, so if you remember, I stitched this on a piece of fabric that was too light and you couldn't see the white snowflakes. So I've been going around with the DMC diamond and that's all I have left to do is to fill in. And then a couple spots there because the white is kind of hard to see. So I'm filling in, I love how it looks in person. It's like shimmery, it's fun. And you guys want to see this done. This is getting votes. So Home for Christmas by Little Dove Designs beat my mother's house. So it is in the final two. Here's the final two, side by side. My mother, or it's not my mother's house. Little Women versus Home for Christmas. So if I finish, if, if this wins, so I'm gonna stitch on this for two more days and then I've already stitched on Little Women and then I'm gonna put them on Instagram. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, it's at Situation Normal. I put it in my story and you vote which one you want to win. That's how it works in case I didn't explain that. So 
the, my goal is if this one ends up winning is to finish all the back stitching and then fully finish it and I know how I'm gonna fully finish it it's just gonna be a bit of work because I have to paint something and you know so home for Christmas that's my goal for if home for Christmas wins and if little women wins my goal is to get the back stitching in for everything I've stitched so far because there is quite a bit of back stitching in here and all around the hand so that's my goal is to finish the back stitch because I'm scared I'm gonna finish this whole piece and have all the back stitch left and not want to do it because I could see me doing that okay so again follow me on Instagram so you can vote for the winner and I'm gonna show you my bracket one last time because there's a spot left so it's little women versus home for Christmas both of them are such good pieces this was really good for me to do this this month because it took out decision making which is difficult for me at this time and I got to work on some stuff that I don't think I would have necessarily pulled if it wasn't listed for me to do and I liked making progress on everything I had a, I had a few new starts I had a finish in this I oh I have a new start too that I haven't talked about yet so okay so then I took one day off of March Stitching Madness so in between working on Little Women and Home for Christmas, I took one day pause to start Strawberry Fields Forever, which is part of a stitch along that I'm hosting with Merritt Crawford, who is so just because Buzz Thread Tales. And we are doing hashtag Strawberry Pickin 21 Sal. And we called it Strawberry Pickin Sal because picking strawberries, you have to pick your chart. So it doesn't have to be one chart, it is any chart you have that has strawberries on it. And it can be one that you've already started or it can be a new start. I saw several of you do this one, which is really fun. I've been following the hashtag, which is also super fun because you can see other strawberry inspired charts or get inspiration for strawberry charts. That's hard to say, strawberry charts, inspiration strawberry charts. Okay, well prove myself wrong so okay so that was that's by blackbird designs and i'm stitching it on a new material actually it is it is light taupe lugana 28 count i had to read that to find out what that was so this is my start on it which way is it here we go i'm stitching it two over two and i'm using dmc and I think it looks really nice on here. So let's see, I'll show you what I've, I did a middle start. I am such a middle starter now. A middle starter, I'm a middle parter. I put my middle part back in because people were saying that it looks old. It's not that I care about looking old. I just don't wanna look dated. I like to stay current. I enjoy fashion and there was, some of you were like, what the heck are you talking about? They say that millennials won't let go of their side part and their skinny jeans. And it's so true, but also I've had a lot of, of middle part. My husband prefers a side part, he likes that. But I like a middle part, so I'm like, here it is. Here's my middle part. Here's my center start. <laughs> middle parts and center starts, right? Okay, so I started with the roof of the house. Ay, 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 I can't get this. Okay, there we go, which is here. And this is, I only did one day because I'm still working on March Stitchy Madness. So this is my one day and I'm loving it. I'm using all the called for, except I am gonna be switching out two of the grays. I just feel this gray just sticks out too much. Not this one, but the other two are just too dark. This, this, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna switch them out. Um, Elizabeth Ann can stitch, switch them out and she went lighter. She pulled like the roof colors and went that way. So if my grays don't work out, I'm probably just gonna use her colors because they look really good on hers. So that was my new start that I'm really excited to have. I remember when I started guys, remember my first video and I only had like two whips or like two at a time, maybe three. And look at me now, I have tons, which I like. I like that I have stuff that I can pull out seasonally to work on and and it's fun to start new things, right? That's me reassuring myself that I'm not out of control. <laughs> I'm not. That's what people that are out of control say. Okay, so I have, those are, that's all my whips. I have 
I know what I'm gonna be working on this week because I'm still doing the stitch along that is uh, the caterpillar cross stitch one made to create, but I had to put that on pause so that I could do that I could do March Stitchy Madness. So I don't know if I'm gonna do mania. I might just make up my own mania, like I know a lot of people do, because I did like the structure of March Stitchy Madness, so I might like some structure in May as well. So we'll see. Is anyone else planning their March Stitchy Madness or their mania? If you don't know what mania is, I'm the least qualified person to tell you because I've never done it and I don't know who started it, but basically in May you either start something new each day or every week you were going to the same thing. I don't know. It's just crazy. You just go crazy for mania. That's what it is. Like mania. Anyways. Okay. So I have a little bit of haul, just one order that uh, for fabric that I made. It is from Embroidery Marketplace, which is a Calgary-based stitch shop, and they are amazing. So if you need fabric or floss, they have some charts, they have like a lot of everything really. Check them out because you can do a FaceTime call with them, or you can just email them and they get back really quick. So I ordered a piece of, it is raw opal, Belfast linen, 32 count. I don't know if you can see the glitter. I wanted it to have the glitter. I'm a little worried it's not dark enough, but I think it should be to stitch white on it. This is for, because I want to stitch the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery Christmas Celebration Sampler. So they went with like a gingerbread color and this is light. I mean, this is just what it showed up as in the photo, but I don't think it's this. This looks kind of red. I don't think it's that red, but this is what I kind of went with and I hope it works. I think it'll be fine. I just, I love a bit of glitter. So I ordered that from them. And then I also ordered, as I mentioned, which was my strawberry field start, this light taupe. Oh, I can't remember, 28 count and it's Lugan. It's discontinued though. So I don't know if you'll be able to get this or not from there, but yes. So that was that's my little haul. That's everything that I have to show you. Um, but stick around because I am gonna show a little teeny sneak of my organization of my craft stuff like all my fabric my fancy floss and I don't know my charts <laughs> oh goodness I hope everyone's having a beautiful day because it's a beautiful day here so if it's not a beautiful day where you are you can take my beautiful day with you for this half an hour video and just enjoy it because I, I did close the window because the birds were a little bit too loud and I thought it might be distracting and also probably my cat would jump up. So I did not open the window, but they are singing away. And oh my gosh, I forgot to turn off the call. So someone just called me right now, but it didn't end my video, so that's good news. Okay, it always happens when I'm trying to wrap up too. Okay, so you guys are amazing. This was episode 22. Follow me on Instagram if you want to vote because I'm going to be posting on the 24th, I believe, the final two to see who wins March Stitchy Madness. Is it Little Women? Is it Home for Christmas? Follow me here. Please subscribe so you don't miss future videos and leave a comment, of course. I'm going to have my email address in the description below as long as well as everything else that I mentioned in the video, which would be the charts, the shops, everything like that. And you can find all that information there. And I don't know if there's anything else I was supposed to say. Maybe. But yes, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for hanging out with me. I love hanging out with you. And I don't even know if this is still filming. Oh, it's still filming. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Keep stitching your story, and I will see you next time. Please do not mind the mess. Welcome to the under construction corner of the office. So this shelf is going to be removed. These are the books, as you can see. And this is what I'm working with right now is this beautiful piece. Don't mind the garbage on the ground. Um, this was something I found on Marketplace and the woman said if I could pick it up, I could have it for free. So let's enter. Oh, before we go in, I'm going to show you I found this at the thrift store, so I've hung my fancy floss on it. I might paint it, but I thought that was pretty cute. So I don't know where I'm gonna put that yet. Once this, once this is gone, this piece, I'll probably I'm gonna have like where I can like iron. Don't mind the dust. So in we go. 
Let's start at the bottom, I guess. I can open this drawer, and inside I have just my frames that I that I will be using to finish. It's not just frames, like there's like the trays, just little things to finish with. And then here I have mm, the drawer sh shame, I guess, like the stuff I haven't finished. Oops. And some hoops, and then here's some little kits and like towels to stitch on and little stocking, just little things like that. And then, oops. And then in the bottom in here, I just have like files stuff. I still have to organize that and some of it's my camera gear as well. So we'll move up here. These are from Dollar Tree, these little bins, and I have all my charts in them. I have like magazines. The magazine ones are actually really heavy. But here's like all my leisure arts. And yeah, magazines. So I'm gonna I'm gonna label, I'm gonna put little labels with like what they are so I know what is where. And then this little basket from Dollar Tree, and it has just like the little ones, the little little charts that I have and some bigger charts but just ones that aren't full size leaflet size or whatever you want to call them and some projects that were in um some stash that I bought this is like the only quilting thing I have it's my mom gave it to me that she had it it's a little Christmas hat in the, in the cottage still need to organize this these are charts in here as well and just some stitch books Here's my fabric stash, my little fabric stash, fabric stash. Okay, so if you're Canadian, you will know that that's supposed to be fabric land. And just some more. I bought, okay, oh, so here's my die in here, my craft die. And I bought these at Dollar Tree too, craft clamps. So we'll see if I start getting into stuff. Over here we have my Mill Hills, Mill Hill beads and non-Mill Hill beads. What the hell? And my tacky glue. And these are my tubed fabrics. So they're all Ada and I think one of Monaco. These are my hand dyed, so either by me or I've purchased fabric. Again, these are from Dollar Tree, these little baskets. These are all the like little squared pieces of Ada or it's not just Ada, it's whatever, just smaller pieces. And up here are my larger pieces of fabric, Ada. Lugana, whatever it is that I've got. So that's how I've got organized. At the top, I have all my little boxes of ribbons, cards, cards, wrapping paper. And that's, that's what I've got so far. So again, I just love the pinks and blues. It's all Dollar Tree, all the containers. And I'm still organizing it. I'm still working on it. It's not fully complete, but that's the craft room tour.